People took to the streets in Paris to protest against President Macron's plan to require a vaccine certificate to gain entry to bars, restaurants and cinemas. French police used tear gas to disperse the crowd. NTD's Costa Menes brings us the latest. French President Emmanuel Macron this week announced sweeping measures to fight a rapid surge in new CCP virus infections, including the mandatory vaccination of health workers and new health pass rules for the wider public. In doing so, he went further than most European nations. As the highly contagious Indian variant fans a new wave of cases, other governments are watching carefully to see how the French public responds. The health pass is also referred to as the green pass. To get one, citizens have to show proof that they have been fully vaccinated, taken a recent negative COVID test or recently recovered from COVID. The police stepped in shortly after scores of protesters marched down a boulevard in central Paris on Wednesday without permission from the Paris authorities. Some wore badges saying no to the health pass. Some critics of Macron's plan, which will require shopping centers, cafes, bars and restaurants to check the health passes of all patrons from August, accused the president of trampling on freedoms and discriminating against those who do not want the vaccine. French media reports one proposal in the government's draft bill is a mandatory 10-day isolation for anyone who tests positive, with police making random checks. Costa Menes, NTD News. The EU has set out environmental plans today to end the sale of petrol and diesel cars within 20 years. That includes phasing out hybrid cars. And today's Patrick Hayden has the story. The EU unveiled a broad climate package Wednesday, including new environmental targets. The European Green Deal. The overarching goal was, and of course is, to make Europe the very first climate-neutral continent in the world. It includes ending the use of combustion engine cars within 20 years. The 27-country bloc has a goal to reduce net greenhouse gas emissions by 55% from 1990 levels by 2030. So I believe we now have a package that can take us to our goal, which is now a legal uh, obligation of reducing our emissions with at least 55% by 2030, which will set us on a path of climate neutrality by 2050. The new goals have massive implications for Europe's automotive industry, and the German Auto Industry Association is not happy about the plan. We think it's a shame that the EU Commission has left the path of technology neutrality with its plan. We are critical of that. We would have preferred a different way. The plan aims to raise the cost of carbon-emitting heating, transport and manufacturing. New taxes are also planned for high-carbon aviation fuel and shipping fuel. And importers would be charged for carbon emissions in the products they make, such as cement, steel and aluminum. The measures will require approval by member states and the European Parliament, a process that could take two years. Patrick Hayden, NTD News, London. From next month, big ships in Venice can no longer cruise the waters of the historic heart of this environmentally fragile city. Protesters have been calling on the government to ban them for years. And today's Costa Menes brings us this report. Italy's Council of Ministers has approved a law declaring Giudecca Canal and waterways near St. Mark's a national monument in urgent need of safeguarding. Starting next month, big ships can no longer travel through the Giudecca Canal or cruise the waters near St. Mark's Square. Director General of the United Nations Culture Agency, UNESCO, tweets the Italian government's decision is very good news and an important step that significantly contributes to the safeguarding of this unique heritage site. UNESCO last month recommended adding Venice to its list of World Heritage in Danger sites. Protesters also welcomed the news. This decision is very positive because it leaves no space for exceptions or quibbles. The government allocates funds to compensate businesses that rely on tourism and might suffer from the ban. Protesters think the compensation should go to workers, not big companies. If we have to compensate them, then they will have to compensate the citizens of Venice for 20 years of pollution, exploitation of the territory and sale of the city's image. A spokesman for Cruise Lines International Association says 
They welcome their decision and alternative dockings will be ready in time for next year's cruise season. We are very happy that there will be a special commissioner with overriding powers uh, and completely dedicated to setting up alternative dockings for cruise ships in the vicinity of the Marghera area. Until a permanent dock is developed for the big cruise ships, the liners will be allowed to pull up in an industrial suburb of Venice. Costa Menes, NTD News. We spoke with one of Wikipedia's co-founders, Larry Sanger, who says the site has lost its neutral point of view and become biased. For example, he points out to the site's article on former President Obama, it completely leaves out the Benghazi scandal where he repeatedly refused to beef up security before the attack on the diplomatic compound in Libya. Sanger tells us why he thinks Wikipedia is a lost cause. Co-founder of Wikipedia Larry Sanger says the online encyclopedia he helped create is more one-sided than ever. In a recent article on his webpage, he says there is a crucial difference between propaganda and information that supports individual deliberation. The difference is neutrality. He says a neutral viewpoint does not exclude points of view by deciding which are correct. It presents various viewpoints and allows people to decide for themselves what to believe. Sanger says the neutrality that is supposed to be one of the five pillars of Wikipedia does not exist. He says Wikipedia editors systematically purge conservative sources and that Fox News, The New York Post, Newsmax and many others are banned. Sanger lists four politically controversial topics and shows how each one of them is biased towards the Democrats' viewpoints in Wikipedia's articles. He says democracy requires that people have access to information so they can make up their own mind. But Wikipedia has turned into another deeply biased institution, and this gives enormous power to people who can control the information. The Wikipedia Foundation did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Colin Fredrickson, NTD News. The head chefs of royalty and presidents are in Paris this week for a tour of France's culinary gems. The chefs feel that good food has an important part to play in the diplomatic lives of their employers. And Denise L. Rhodes brings us the details. The head chefs of about 20 world leaders arrived in Paris this week for a seven-day tour of France's gastronomic culture. Among notable names is the personal chef to the Queen and head chef of the royal household, Mark Flanagan the chef of the French presidential palace, Fabrice Davienne, and White House executive chef Christietta Comerford are also attending. Comerford said the visit is a show of culinary diplomacy. In our world, food unites. So in any table, in any gathering of you know, eating and having communion together, we're able to exchange ideas, you know, exchange stories, and this is actually, for us as chefs, is the best tool that we could ever use. Earlier this week, the chefs met with President Emmanuel Macron and were guests to a traditional Bastille Day military parade on the Champs-Élysées. Comerford, along with Davienne and Monaco's royal chef Christiane Garcia, collaborated in the kitchen of the French Foreign Ministry to prepare a charity dinner. France's ambassador for gastronomy, Guillaume Gomez, was head chef at the French presidential palace for 25 years before Davienne took over. He says the gathering of distinguished cooks promotes a more pleasant ambiance in international politics. Our slogan in the Chef the Chefs Club is that if politics divides people, good food on the table reunites. And so, of course, we hope that we all have a role to play. The chefs will tour various cities in French provinces and will stay in the country until Saturday. Earl Rhodes, NTD News. That's the news for today and thanks for tuning in. I'm Stuart Lees. Thank you for watching our daily news show on YouTube. You can also watch our other programming on channel 190 on Sky TV or on Freeview via Channel Box on channel 271. In the meantime though, please give this video a like and hit subscribe to our channel. Have a good day.